And now to kick off STEAM Dev Days, Gabe Newell. Thanks very much. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Gabe Newell. So we don't actually like going to conventions. A lot of times they seem to not offer a lot of value. So we're going to try to have a convention that's actually more useful. Please let us know whether or not we're successful with that at the end of the events. <coughs> the material we're going to cover over the next two days, I sort of think of it as two in two broad categories. The first is related to work that we're doing to make sure that we all have an open platform for innovation. We've been thinking a lot about how we can contribute to that in terms of our investment in Linux, working with hardware partners on Steam machines, and so on. So we want to see if we can't communicate that, find out what other people can do, how they can contribute, and see what you all think of our efforts to date in that space. The second major thread is, OK, given that we've got this, this opportunity to be innovative, what are the different things that we see that are interesting? What do some of our partners see that are interesting? Uh, people know Michael Abrash all the way back from the Quake days. Um, he's decided that he would impale himself on the VR opportunity. And uh, uh, AR seems to still be too hard, but we think we've made some progress in VR to the point where it actually represents something useful to game developers. I don't know about you, most of the time, I, I don't know how many years now, 20 years at least, that I've been going to VR demos and I put them on and spend 90 seconds looking at it and go, nope. <laughs> uh, and hopefully you'll go to his demo and you'll say, yep. <laughs> We're also thinking a lot about, uh, we think, a couple of years ago, we started to think that maybe we weren't thinking about games right, that you know, there was the way that when we started with Half-Life that we thought about what game development was, and we had to rejigger that when we started working on Counter-Strike. A couple of years ago, we started to think we're all just, we started to have these weird thoughts about economies and the importance of user-generated content and how the process that had given rise to Steam was actually accelerating, and that the most important developers were actually our customers. And th thinking through what that means from development tools, uh, from game design, uh, from other kinds of services that need to be in place. So you also hear us talking about that, about how we think of this user-generated content connected economy where Essentially, all of what we do really is almost more of an instance dungeon of a much broader connected economic uh, behemoth. So we're going to talk about that, and hopefully that's interesting and thought-provoking to you guys. Uh, we're really We're going to ask you a lot of questions as we go along. For us, uh, it's that iteration cycle of being close with the people who are giving us feedback that we think is core to making us successful. For example, you're going to see uh, we did the 300-person hardware beta test for our Steam machine, and you'll see that the Steam machine's already iter you know we've already changed the design as a result of feedback, both from those users and from our software partners. You know that's not a bug to us; that's a feature. That's the whole reason that we're doing it. It can look really kind of confusing to people in the traditional hardware world, where you're supposed to just do this giant one-time monolithic release. And we're like, actually, no, we want to be evolving and learning. That's what made our games successful in the past when we started doing uh, multiplayer releases. It's what made Steam successful. And we think it's also going to apply in the hardware space. You should also ask us lots of questions. Uh, you know, you can ask any Valve person a question. If they don't know the answer, they'll know who would be able to have that uh, conversation with you. And we really do expect it to be a conversation where we get smarter at the same time we're giving you guys information. So in that spirit, does anybody have any questions? 
somebody. You in the orange. Yeah, the degree to which we're an intermediary or people that you are promoting to valve people, that's just, that's broken. I mean, we, we want to come up with something that makes the machinery as transparent as possible. You know, it's like, oh yeah, there's some stuff that happens, but really what I'm focused in on is what my customers want, what they're telling me, how they reacted to the last thing I did, and so on. So. Uh, we have work that's ongoing in terms of simplifying the, the publishing and promotional process, but the goal is absolutely to get as much data to you about your customers and give you as much flexibility and freedom in terms of uh, what you're giving to them, how you're promoting it to them, and, and what it is that you're discovering. So if there's anything that isn't like that, it's just an interim problem that we're we haven't gotten around to addressing yet, but philosophically, it's you and your customers and a bunch of useful tools. There. They could have their own curated store of games, and uh, is that going to be a reality? Or yeah, uh, that's. Um, the way that we think of it is that we think of a store as being another example of user-generated content. Uh, so we sort of tested that idea. We're really happy with it, and that's definitely the direction that we're going. Because that, you know, it's no different than somebody creating a Crystal Maiden, you know, headdress. Uh, it's value that other people will want. Each person has different priorities. You know, that store itself is a really valuable piece of user-generated content. So the, you know, we'll have a store, but in the same way that we have content that lives alongside lots of user-generated content uh, as well. Uh, but that's definitely happening. You're disrupting the traditional consoles going forward, but uh, can you make any comment on Valve's role on the Linux desktop, particularly Ubuntu? That sounds like a landmine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're big fans of Linux. Uh, uh, Linux is, you know, great. We're doing more and more of our own development on it, and we do expect uh, that for a lot of customers, uh, migrating Linux onto their desktops or their laptops will make more and more sense uh, as we continue on in our current operating system trajectories. <laughs> Thanks. And the white shirt here. I'll do three more questions. Have you been surprised by the success of the early access program and how much consumers have kind of invested uh, in that? And how do you see that evolving over time? Because it seems to be something that's really kind of taken off on Steam. Uh, I mean, we thought it would be useful. I mean, if you're asking us if we were surprised, no. But we de definitely factor in how well it works for both customers and developers in terms of how much we invest in it further. Uh, but that's the kind of discovery process we like to have, where it's like, oh, OK. So that did that. Then that justifies people spending more time on subsequent versions of it. It affects the sort of internal weighting and decision making. So that's one. Next. OK. Uh, Jason Weeks. Uh, I was one of some comments on Greenlight. I know it's been pretty successful. What's your plans for going forward for Greenlight and make it easier for indies to get more games on there? Uh, well, our goal is to make Greenlight go away, not because it isn't a useful step now, but because we're evolving towards something where there's less of a filtering process between what customers want. I mean, we're moving towards something that looks just a lot more like, oh, I've got something valuable. I can publish it and take advantage of the sets of Steam services without somebody else having to sort of give you permission. So anyhow, thank you very much. I have a light flashing at me telling me that I don't get to answer the third question. <clears throat> and uh, hope you enjoy the rest. Definitely go to the uh, Intel presentation, because they're planning on having kind of an Oprah moment for you. So <laughs> thank you.